It's a discussion from page 20 in my lecture notes. And the question there says, find the cos of uh, 5 theta in terms of the cos and sine of theta. Uh, I'll take you for, this, for the solutions to this. It's a, it's a subject which I discussed even last year, so you will have a chance to follow the discussion which I presented last year as well, if you want to. It's a, it's a nice technique which you will use often in the yellow book. In the yellow book, you often need to find cos of the multiple of angle in terms of the cos of the angle itself and vice versa. So the technique basically now based on our exponential and trigonometric forms and binomial formula. Look at this. First, first I will quote the de Moivre theorem for the n equal 5. And the quotation goes like this. He's a left-hand side. And he's the right hand side of the Demoavar theorem. Now, what I will do next, I will do the expansion of this left hand side as a binomial, as a binomial expression. For that, I need a Pascal triangle. Here it is. Here's my Pascal triangle, uh, grown to the level five. My, I start one and one. Here my one. One and one together gives me two. Here's another one. Here's another one. One and two gives me three. Here we have symmetricity. One, four, six, symmetricity. One, five, ten, symmetricity. Here's my Pascal triangle grown to the level five. I can use now the coefficients to produce the expansion. Here's the expansion. A plus B to the power of five. A five. 5 from here, 10 from here, another 10 from the symmetrical side, another 5 from the symmetrical side, and finally b to the 5. Here's the expansion. As effective as this, you can do that if you know the binomial formula. Now, the method I'm going to use to find the actual answer to the question on page 20, so to find the expression for this course in terms of the cos and sine alone, alone, sorry, uh, is this. I will do this expansion. I will collect all of the terms which correspond to the imaginary part, all of the terms which correspond to the real part. In fact, I don't need the first ones. I only need the terms which correspond to the real part alone, and then I can equate to this real part. And that will be all there is to it, isn't it? So when I will do my expansion, I will do it in a the, in the smart way now. I'm not going to put everything in. It's too much to write. I'm going to put only those terms which will give me the real part of my left-hand side. Now, real part, remember, because there's an I here, it will be, uh, there, will be, there won't be any I here, there will be one I in here, there will be I square in here, I cubed, I four, I five. So every even power of I will give me a real number, plus or minus one, depending on the power. Every odd power of I give me, will give me I, and those I will just, Discard. So out of this expansion, I will only focus on the even powers of B because only those will deliver me the real part of the left hand side. Are you with me on this one? Good. Here's the expansion. So my cos 5 theta from here, I take this term, which is cos 5 theta, then I take this term, and we have a negative here because I square gives me negative 1. And then I take this term. Because I4 gives me 1 again. That, that's it. We just solved the question. Remember, the question was, find the expression for the cos 5 theta in terms of the cos theta and sine theta. Here's the expression. So the way we found the expression for the real part, we similarly, similarly we can find the expression for the, real, for the imaginary part by taking odd powers of B, from this expansion. If I do that, the expression for sine 5 theta will be 5 cos sine theta. It's from here. Negative 10 cos square sine cube. It's from here because b cube, which is i cube, gives me negative i. That's why we have negative here. And the very last one is from here. What I'm going to do next is what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to I'm planning to get rid of courses here. I don't like courses. I'd like to have an expression in pure science, no courses at all. This is relatively easy, isn't it? Because 
I have to, well, this course can be replaced with a one take sine square theta. It's a, one of the standard trigonometric identities. Everyone here, I hope, know. Uh, this course, again, can be replaced with the same identity, but now we have to extra square it, which if I expand via binomial formula again, that will be the expansion. So if I combine everything together now, we can do it in a smart way again. So remember, I just imagine this piece, it goes in here, and this piece, it goes in here. Altogether, I will be looking at the sum of the powers of signs, right? Which powers? Well, here, I will have power, uh, first power, cubic power, and the fifth power, right? Because we have an extra sign here. Here, we will be looking at the cubic power and the fifth power. And here, we will be looking at the fifth power. So, altogether, we'll have only, only three terms. Cubic, uh, uh, linear power, cubic power, and the fifth power, right? If I rearrange everything and if I bring everything together, only three powers of sign eventually will be there. Let's just see these powers. Here they are. Fifth power comes with this coefficient. One comes from here. Uh, five comes from this sign times this sign four and this five. And 10 comes from here, obviously, and this negative 10 and this negative sine squared. Cube comes from this coefficient, negative 10 from here and negative 10 from here. Here's a negative 10. And the linear one comes just with five from here. This one and this sign. So the complete expression for the sine 5 theta in terms of the sine theta alone, no courses anymore, is like this. <coughs> Are you still following? I'm making some jumps over the tedious steps, but I hope you can recover those even without my comments on those. <coughs> 